We've all heard this concept of working smarter rather than harder. However, it occurred to me that often on piano, I find myself working harder rather than smarter. Of course, working harder rather than smarter is a very, very big topic and there are many ways that it can happen. So let's think of one tiny example where we can see it for ourselves and then of how we might be able to fix the problem. So for example, do you have certain areas in pieces that you've played, you know, for a long time that you're still never 100% happy with? I certainly do. There are pieces I've played for years and there are little areas that I don't really like the way I play them. And I've always just assumed that, you know, with a bit more practice, it will eventually come good. However, I was watching a video by Dr. Robert Durso about his first meeting with Dorothy Taubman. And I had this sort of light bulb moment. So basically he said that he'd played something for her and then rather than starting to discuss technique as you might imagine would happen, she said to him, okay, so are there any areas in that piece you've just played that, you know, despite a lot of practice, you're still not particularly confident about? And he showed her a couple of places where this was the case. And she said, okay, so let's work on just those little bits and see if we can find a way of making them easier for you. And this is where the light bulb happened. And I thought to myself, actually, maybe when this happens, it's not a case of needing to do more work. It's a case of needing to do some smarter work. So here's a tiny example for you. I've played the Busey's Claire Loom pretty much for as long as I can remember. And this tiny section here, I'm not saying I felt I played it badly, but I was never 100% happy that I was voicing those top notes particularly well all the time. And it was on joining a couple of mental dots in my head that I thought, you know, perhaps this is a question of fingering. Now, the first dot was the idea of remaining aligned whilst playing. And this is something that, frankly, with my smaller hands, I sometimes find quite difficult to do because it's hard to keep the hands perfectly aligned when we need to stretch to reach some of the keys. The second dot was something I have talked about before, and it's an idea I got from Rami Barnev's book, The Art of Piano Fingering. And it's this sort of a choice of fingering hierarchy. And it then occurred to me that in the case of this particular passage, I'd always opted for a fingering that was actually mentally quite convenient, but not so physically convenient. And of course, that's the lowest part of this hierarchy. So what I used to do was keep the same fingers on the middle notes of these chords, which, you know, per se is not too, too bad, but it causes a slight twist in the hand when I do it. And as a result, you then have less control over the way we can distribute weight and therefore voicing becomes much harder to do. However, if we look at each chord in turn and just rest our fingers gently over the keys, we can see that the middle notes of these chords can be played better with different fingers depending on the chord itself. And this is less mentally convenient as we need to remember to change finger, but it feels much more comfortable. And the fact that it's more comfortable means I have more control and therefore I get better voicing. Another small example in exactly the same piece is this section in C-sharp minor. Now, I'd always found this wasn't too secure, but you know, with enough pedal, you can always manage to cover the fact that it doesn't seem so, so even. And it's not helped really by the fact that the left hand needs to play quite in front of the torso, which is not a comfortable position. And I'd always use the same left hand fingering pattern for each of these broken chords, which again is mentally very convenient, but physically less so. But when I then started to change the fingering and use the thumb more often, whilst it was more mentally challenging to do this, physically it was much easier, and finally the musical result was also much better. Debussy's first arabesque is another good example of a piece I've played for a long time. And this set of arpeggios here can be managed pretty much with the same fingering, apart from at this point where for my hands, the jump is a little too big for me to get without sometimes having a bump, which therefore interferes with the musical line. However, if I opt to use my thumb in the middle of this particular arpeggio, then it brings my hand much more naturally in position to carry on with the run. Again, this initially feels much more difficult to do as it lacks the mental convenience of simply following the same pattern over and over again. But with a little bit of work, you soon find that once you get over this little mental challenge, it's actually physically much easier to do.
There's a similar situation in the other set of left-hand arpeggios too, where it can feel much more sensible to keep using the same pattern as we go down. However, I found at this particular point and with the next arpeggio, it could start to fall apart sometimes and not be so, so smooth. And again, if we choose to use the thumb here rather than follow the same pattern, we bring our hand quite naturally into position. Now I could go through lots more examples that I've discovered over the past months. However, unless your hands are just like mine and you face the same kinds of challenges that I face when I play piano, then they probably wouldn't apply to you. Rather, I think what the take home from this video should be is that if we are finding that something just isn't coming good, even though we put in a lot of work to it, then maybe we should really try to look at what is an alternative approach. So let's find a smarter way rather than working harder. Now, whilst clearly it's not all just about fingering, there are many other things that come into play when we have problems with a piece. Fingering is obviously one of the bigger ones that frequently trips us up. So if you'd like to learn more about the art of piano fingering, then I've linked my review of that book for you here. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching today and look forward to seeing you very soon.